Hello there and welcome to an Impact Gamers tutorial. This is a beginner's tutorial for Click Team Fusion 2.5 free edition um, and we're going to be looking at making a physics based game. This is the third of a series so you may have already done arcade and platform previously. We're going to start a new application to make a new game and we're going to go into the first frame. Now um, we still use active objects, we still use backdrop objects uh, in physics based games. It's just the interaction of them is vastly different and let me show you. So let's insert a new object, active and click to drop. Now all we need to do is go into the movement property and change it into these physics um, movements and then physics will apply to it. So I'm going to set this as a physics bouncing ball movement. It tells us quite politely to please insert a physics engine object into the frame. Well, we know how to insert objects, so that's fine for us. Insert new object. And down here we have the physics engine. Uh, it's a picture of a, a ball going to hit in some blocks. And this is an invisible object. Um, this object doesn't isn't visible to the player, but it does contain all of the variables, all the numbers we can change of the world. So uh, the way that gravity is, the direction, the strength of it, um and if backdrop objects if you might remember from the platform game if obstacles um if they actually apply to the physics world also projectiles when we launch an object when we shoot um whether that actually applies so and um just non-physical objects and it talks about density and we're going to have a look at that in in a little bit we'll come back to that but this is an invisible object so i'm just going to place it outside the play area so that i don't um I don't get confused and move it or delete it. I only need one physics engine uh, for the game unless I could have multiple if I wanted and they have this thing called an engine ID. Um, so you can choose which engine ID. If I have a look at the movement properties for this, it's gonna use engine ID zero by default. Okay, great. We've added an object and we've added a physics engine. If we run the application now, you'll see off it goes and behaves very differently to a normal bouncing ball because gravity affects it but it still leaves the play area so we're going to go into the event editor we're going to click on the words new condition we're going to click on the active object and click position test position and do the classic four arrows leaving the frame area there if it leaves the play area then we want to right click now we can choose stop or bounce it doesn't really matter because it's a bouncing ball because um it's physics stopping is the same as bouncing um, so stop is just the normal thing that we will use uh, for that because it has a setting called elasticity which um, is set at 100% there which means that it will bounce to 100% of the energy if you drop it from a height of I know 300 pixels it will bounce with the same energy so it can get to the same height again so if we run the application off it goes now you may notice that it's not bouncing in a very box like way it's bouncing in a very circular way and that is just down to the fact of it has a collision shape and the collision shape is set as circle now realistically um it's not a circle it's a box and we can choose uh shape of first image because it's a diamond in fact because it's a box on its on its corner uh shape of first image will give a more realistic bounce so let's have a look at that off it goes and you'll see there we go it got caught on a corner and bounced much more rapidly there still a bit odd uh for a for a box but there we go now um we're going to name it because that's a good thing to do so we know what's happening so you can just uh click on the name and or you can press click on the object and press f2 uh, we will call this bouncing also we'll change the look of it very quickly um, I quite like the fact that it's uh, an odd shape. So I'm going to use the polygonal tool and make it filled in and make it kind of spiky. Or actually, I'll use the outlined one. Here we go. And we'll make a weird kind of spiky shape just by clicking the way around. And the polygonal tool just links up, double click, and there we go. We've got a weird spiky thing. Um, now, it's really important that the hotspot is set in the gravitational center. Now, Clicks Infusion has this quick move here. And if we press G, it will move it there. If it's not, so I'll just make it not, um, gravity doesn't affect things properly and collisions don't affect things property, properly. You can see it's uh, just behaving really randomly, which can be useful if you want a very random uh, physics movement, but not if you want the player to work out what's happening. So um, double click on your object 
and just press that G, select the hotspot and G and put it in the center. And that way we're going to get a much more uniform and expected bounce. Great. I'm happy with that. Uh, we're going to put a barrier in our game. So I'm just going to insert another active object. I just double click that time to get the, uh, the list up. Double click in a blank area. Um, and we're going to resize it. So click on it once, wait a second, click on it again. And I'm going to set the barrier to be all the way across the screen. And let's choose a barrier like color, red, maybe. Um, now, this is going to be physics based. I want this in the gravitational center. This is going to react to the world. So just do that. Um, and there we go, a barrier there. Now, I'm not going to set any physics for this. If I set physics for this, gravity will start to affect it. It'll start to be knocked about. I'm going to leave it as static, not physics static, because it can still be pushed about. And you'll see that in a moment. So just, just static. There we go. Um, I'm happy with that. I just need to name it. Uh, something simple wall will do. Now I'm going to say a new condition. If the spiky ball collisions with another object, the wall, then it stops. I'm just going to pull that tick down to save the time, but I could have just right clicked movement and select stop. Right. Let's uh, run the application. There we go. And it's now trapped. It's uh, because it's odd shape and because of, sort of how it lands, it kind of loses a lot of momentum. So we're going to add a boost button into this to kind of boost it up. So a new condition, uh, we're going to say on the keyboard, upon pressing a key spacebar, um, we will add an impulse. An impulse is a force, like when someone sat on a swing, uh, you don't constantly push them. Uh, you just push at just the right time, and just a one-off push at just the right time. And so an impulse is just a, a, a sudden push that only only happens once. It's not like applying a motor to something where you're applying a force uh, all the time. It's an instantaneous thing. So movement, physics, and am I gonna lose this? No, here it is. Um, apply an impulse. Applying a force uh, would be like attaching a motor or a, a rocket to something uh, that the force would keep on going and it would keep accelerating, but we just want to apply an impulse. Now, this is interesting. It says between zero and 250. That's not true. You can you can set negative impulses. You can actually, um, I think you can anyway. Um, don't quote me on that. Test that yourself. Um, but you can set a much higher impulse. Now, because this is a small object, I know that uh, impulse of sort of 200 is going to be quite high. So I'm only going to set an impulse of uh, 60. Now it's asking for the angle in degrees. Uh, zero is pointing to the right, 90 degrees is pointing up, 180 pointing to the left, and 270 degrees pointing down, 360 is looped all the way back around, pointing to the right. Now, I, I actually want it to boost it in the direction it's already going. So I'm going to find it from it i'm going to find the direction it's already going so movement physics um i'm going to find its velocity angle the, the angle in which the speed is pushing it okay all right now i'm going to run my application and then press spacebar there we go look at that do that again spacebar boom great fine i can give it a big push and uh it maintains a lot of that, but it uh, slowly, because of its irregular shape, kind of loses <laughs> loses where it's going. So, fantastic. I'm very happy with that. This barrier, though, is going to serve to protect some other objects I'm going to add into the game. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called a flag. A flag is a switch, uh, like a light switch. It can be on or off. It can only be on or off. It can't be... Uh, anything else so in some programming language is a true or false same as on or off is what the what the flags are used for now if i choose the wall um, and look at its values i have choice of alterable values alterable strings strings are words um words or numbers values are just numbers flags here we go let's have a new one and i'm going to call this uh one um pass through and I'm just going to say that uh, that if the bouncing collides with the wall, oh, we've already got that. Sorry, we've already got that line too. I'm going to insert an extra condition here, so they both have to be true for this line to work. Currently, it's always going to it's always going to bounce off the wall. But I'm going to right click on the words. There's a right click on the words, insert, 
and I'm going to check what the ha happening with the flag. So alterable values flags is flag off. If the flag is off, pass through. I don't want it to be able to pass through. I want it to bounce. But if the flag is on, it that line won't run. That line won't be triggered because it will collide. It will start doing checking and it will say that's true, but that's not. I'm going to skip all these actions on this row. So that's fine. We just need to be able to toggle it. So um, new condition, let's set a keyboard. Upon pressing a key, well, I'll use control because it's near spacebar. And what we're going to do is right click onto wall and choose flags and toggle. Now, toggle is a, such a useful command because if you say, if you click on something, set the flag on, and if you click on it, set it off, it's going to run both those commands and set it on and off all at once. Whereas if you just say toggle, if it's off, it will become on. If it's on, it'll become off. And we've got the flag selected we want. So when we press control, toggle that. Now, that's all well and good. We can make it pass through and not pass through, but we don't have any visual way of seeing that. So we're going to add in just two more lines. New condition on the wall, alterable values, flags. Is flag on? pass through if pass through is on i actually want it to be invisible because it's make object invisible there we go just that now um i'll just show you a quick way of doing flag rule if you've already got the flag of on or off it doesn't matter which and you pull it onto the word new condition you duplicate it you get the same uh condition happening there and if you right click if you negate this line you can see the opposite of on is off so negate so negating is really useful for just checking the opposite of a rule. So if it's off, then we want to set the visibility to uh, reappear. Sorry, it's just getting cut off there. So make visible. Uh, so if we run our application now, off it goes bouncing. And if I press control, there we go. It's disappeared. Let's see if we can get that to go through and turn it back on. Great. And if I press space, perfect. All right, I'm really happy with that. So. Um, We've got the active object there, static, and then we've got static bouncing ball. Now I want to show you physics static. So we're going to go back into the frame editor and insert a new object. Now this object, active object, going to click twice on it just to make it a box um, orange. Yep, why not? Now the hotspot I know already starts in the center when you create an active object. So because I haven't changed anything, uh, the hotspot's in the right place already. Okay, there is the box. Let's call it box one because we'll add some different ones. Um, and let's also um, set its movement. So movement to be physics static. Great. Now physics static movement is very similar to physics bouncing ball. It has most of the, well, it has the same, it has the same settings apart from it doesn't have an initial speed. And also um, it defaults to the shape of first image that we changed the other one to, and it defaults to elasticity zero. But if I set the elasticity to 100, it would be almost the same as this object, but just without a starting speed. So they're very similar physics static movement and physics um, bouncing ball movement are very similar. Um, just the fact that it has this initial speed option and also the defaults to shape of first image rather than ball. Fantastic. Now this box is just gonna fall off the screen. I know that because I haven't told it that it's any boundaries. So um, I could start adding lots of rules in but i want to show you something quite useful in the physics world you want all the objects that are physically movable to be controlled in the same way and follow the same conditions normally so what we're going to do is we're going to put these uh, objects into a group uh, called a qualifier now if i click on the events in the properties window i get qualifiers now qualifiers just a grouping in the same way that you might talk about uh, in a school being class 3F or class 4B, it it identifies a whole group of people to give a command to. So if you say group uh, class 3F line up, then you 30, 30 little kids hopefully line up. So we're going to set qualifier to, to say that these are all one group. Now, it doesn't matter what qualifier we choose. It just, um, it just allows it to be in a group, but we're going to choose something sensible to help us remember what they are. So you click in the white space next to qualifier. I'll go through that quick quickly. Um, again, click on the object. Go make sure you're in the event uh, properties, which is a picture of the event editor. Click in the white space next to qualifiers. Then click edit. It's a lot of clicking. Click add, and there's a whole list here. Now, 
there's a whole list. Now, it doesn't matter which I choose of these, but there's one called physical object, which might be useful. There we go, physical object. That's useful because that's what they are. And this one, I'll do the same. Now, a quick way, if you've added loads of things into the game, you can actually um, just drag around and set all the qualifiers for things at the same time if you just select them um, rather than doing it individually. But individually, hopefully, you saw how to do it. Okay, they've got a qualifier. What's the point of that? The point of that is that um, I now want to say whatever rule applies to this, um, I actually want it to apply to the qualifier of physical objects. So I'm going to replace right click on the picture and replace with another object physical objects then it gives you a scary warning this action cannot be undone so make sure you save it first uh, before doing this if you... now i'm also aware that there's one rule here spacebar i don't want all the all the physical objects to start flying around oh, i could show you what it's like it'd be amusing um there we go and then if i press spacebar there we go they just start flying about and the box gets pushed. I don't want that. So I'm just going to move this all the way back to here. Um, oh, but shame on me because it's replaced all the actions as well. I just need to go back and it's, I don't want to find the velocity of any physical object. I want to find it of this. So hmm, that wasn't a good demonstration. Sorry about that. So let's uh, movement, physics, velocity angle. There we go. Now we can see that's better. Now, the reason that I've done that is because um, I don't want to add lots of lines of code when I add multiple physical objects. And I also want to say, if any physical object in the physical world hits a physical object in the physical world, and then they stop. So movement, stop. Oh, that's quite... <laughs> Let's see if I can uh, get that on screen properly. Right click, movement, stop. So I'm just applying it in the same way you would to any object. It just appears as an object, but it's a group. Okay, fantastic. So now, excitingly, oops. I'm going to use the paint tool and get the box and I'm just going to make a stack of boxes and make another stack of boxes right and run the application there we go now oh, let's unleash boom there we go unleash the spiky wall not much damage happened because there's so much weight so much mass stacked on top of each other that not much happened but obviously if I press spacebar there we go boom that's what we all wanted to see um now this spiky ball doesn't actually give much impact and that's due to its size and density i'll just right click to get rid of paint mode this um the kind of the force that something exerts in clicked infusion in the physical world is based on how many pixels is colored in on it um so its size in effect and also its density now density is how much uh, mass is packed into something it's the same way that you could have a beach ball and a bowling ball the same size uh, but if you throw a bowling ball at some pins you're not going to knock them down because it's not very dense there's not much material inside it so uh, we're going to go to its movement properties and we're going to make this be made out of a heavier material in effect so i'm going to say uh, its density is 100 well, maybe even 150 actually um, and f8 just run the application there we go my invincible wall is still invincible, but I will turn it off. Now, if I press spacebar, you'll notice the speed. Thank you all. Very good. The speed that it went off at was lower because I applied an impulse. The impulse is also related to the density of the object as well, the size of it. So if you start changing density, you'll have to change the forces. I've now got it crushed between two boxes, but that's okay. I can press spacebar and start to flick it out. There we go. Good. Great. So I'm happy with that. Um, I could also, the other alternative, I could just make the box less dense. Uh, you can only go down to zero, which is useless, but uh, one, you can only really go down to one. So if I made the box dense, the density of one, uh, we should witness ultimate carnage when I press spacebar. There we go. Fantastic. You can see that a lot of the energy of the bouncing ball is taken out with these boxes moving and that's because you're you're sharing the force the force of the um bouncing ball is getting passed onto the boxes which are then moving and therefore you're left with um a very kind of spongy movement you can see so let's um let's put the density back to something sensible 30 so that a bit more rigid a bit more box like there we go better also uh 
we can change the elasticity, even though they're static, we can change the elasticity, make that maybe five to make them have a little bit of bounce to their step. Let's watch them land. Mm, didn't look very effective, but maybe something higher of 20 or something like that. Good. Okay. Very nice. We can now knock over boxes. Um, let's have it that we can start to destroy the boxes. That would be even more fun. So um, we're going to use something called alterable values. An alterable value um, is a number that can change. So the strings are words and numbers, the flags are switches on or off, uh, values are numbers. So we're going to set a health to health. There's some you can't choose. Like if you wrote the word speed, it would tell you you can't use that. That's already a expression or already a term used in Click Team Fusion. You can't use it. So um, you might have to, if you wanted to capture something like speed, you might have to call it speedy or speed one or something so that it doesn't complain. But health is okay. We can use that. Um, now the health of a block, it's always easier to have numbers count down. And that's so that if you add one rule saying that if the uh, health of an object gets to zero, then it gets destroyed. Then if you apply that to a group, you can have different healths and it work. If you were to say if health equals five and then it dies, and then you added another object, you'd have to add a unique condition to that to say if health is 10, then destroy it. Whereas here we can set an initial value, the value it starts off at. Um, anyway, it's just best to have things count down to zero and have zero as a, as a number that's the same for everything that zero equals death. So we're going to not set the initial value at the moment because I'm going to show you what happens when you do. And we're going to say a new condition that um, if the spiky ball collides with, no, actually, actually if any object, uh, when any object collides with any object, let's, let's apply it to the whole world. We're going to alter values, subtract from health one. Okay, great. So if any box hits any other box, um going to subtract one from health now uh we'll see how well that works but we're also going to say when any physical object well just the yeah any physical object if the alpha value equals zero then uh we will destroy it and we watch the game and there's nothing there because they've all been destroyed because we haven't set an initial value now let's set the health to five i'm going to set my bouncing ball to have um a health i want to make it invincible so i'm going to be really cheeky i'm just going to say it's health to minus one and if you notice this isn't called health it's called alterable value it doesn't matter it's just because it's in slot a and this is in slot a it will um it'll be fine but to help out ourselves i'll call it health so that we know what's happening so that's invincible now because it'll never equal zero um in fact uh yeah there we go let's run the application there Boom, 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 boom. You can see things getting destroyed as they drop down and hit multiple times. Okay, so we need a bit more health. Let's see if we can get this ball. Yeah. Uh, health of five is a bit low, so let's go for 12. Great. Now, it would be even more useful, there we go, if I put the boxes in um, their own group as well. You can have multiple groups, so you can have a secondary group um, of obstacle or whatever you want to call it uh, to apply things specifically to the boxes. And then I wouldn't have had to worry about the health of the uh, spiky ball because I could just say if any of the boxes, uh, if any of them, their health is zero, then they go. So that would have been neater uh, and better. So let's quickly do it. Let's quickly do the right thing. So click on events. I'm going to add in a second qualifier and I'm going to call it obstacles uh, because there looks like a box so and I'm, then I'm going to say that if a obstacle uh if this let's leave that and I'm just going to say that if the collision between I'm only going to have the spiky ball damage them if a spiky ball hits an obstacle then let's delete the that from there so I just want it to stop if it's an obstacle but if it's a spiky ball then it can subtract one from health there we go uh oh if you notice i need to move this tick along to the obstacle rule that's what happens when you come to change things uh you end up with things out of sync so maybe i should have uh started off on the right way but anyway if health of an obstacle is zero destroy it and if a spiky ball hits an obstacle take one from health and that way we don't need to worry about this uh this guy's health because i could set this to zero and he'll still be fine because he is not an obstacle 
There we go. And let's see. Oh, they're not going to hit them 12 times. Let's just say twice. If they get hit twice with the ball, maybe even once might be better. There we go. For testing purposes. <laughs> this is this could take some time. Let's put that barrier back in. There we go. I managed to destroy this. There we go. Bounce, 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 bounce. Perfect. Well, let's show some damage on this. And we're going to use some... Um, I'm going to set this to three. Uh, if you click twice, we've got something called animation frames. Down here, we have like a compass of directions. If things are on the right, if things are moving upwards, downwards, and also these different animations that get triggered if they were platform games or um, eight direction movement um, or launching an object. For physics-based games, uh, we don't need to use those because things should remain looking the same throughout. So if I add another frame and another fr oh no 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 let me teach you the best way of doing this right okay frame one frame two here we go let's get the brush tool see through i'm going to draw a crack but i can do it like that now if i press plus again it will keep the same animation so that i can extend the cracks okay cracks extending and four And just to make it super exciting, I'm going to copy this, Control C, um, in disappearing, I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to start rubbing it out, not with eight, but maybe with something smaller. So, do that, press plus, so rub it out a bit more, and rub it out a bit more. There we go. It looks like it dissolves rather than it explodes. Probably wanted them to move outwards, but that's just a quick way of doing it. So I've now got multiple frames. But under direction options, I can set the speed to be zero, as in it won't play. So if I press play, it will stay on frame one. Now, this is cheeky. It isn't frame one. And in fact, this is an animation cell, not a frame. A frame we know is what the level is made out of. So this is frame one. This is sort of animation cell one, but it's called frame. So excuse the reuse of the word frame. Um, but this is an animation not related to the actual level. But... In the direction options, we can set the speed to zero, which is more the animation options. Um, and we are going, this is actually the cell number zero or frame zero, uh, frame one. So watch what happens because uh, we've got health of three um, and we've got one, two, three, four. So maybe we want, uh, maybe we want health of four to match our four animations. And we want to then do, 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 say that always so on the cog click on the words new condition click on the cog always and always will we always want the obstacles animation change the animation frame so animation change animation frame and look the first frame number is zero it lied to us when it said it was one it is actually zero so if our health is four um we've got it reversed because our zero is a solid object so what we want to do is we want to say uh it's going to be four minus well, it's going to be three minus our current health three minus our health no what's it going to be so we want to get it to three yes three. uh do, 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 do. sorry i confused myself for a moment there i try not to in these videos so the health goes up and go that goes down four three two one zero we want to reverse that uh so we probably want it to be zero yep we want it like that um to work down to zero so if we want it to work down to zero it must start off at four surely four minus four is zero yeah three two one okay let's just see what happens there i think there we go you can see them cracking just want them to be hit again. I think, um, there we go, cracking, cracking. Yeah, that seems like I've done it right. Although I've been wrong before. There we go. Ah, uh, right. Now, when they're, <laughs> when they're being destroyed, left with just a little bit of rubble. Let's have a quick look at that. Maybe direction options, speed. Hmm. They should. They should, uh, they should disappear. Let's just add in one more frame. Let's do a quick fix of just nothing there. Just to uh, solve that. And they should have just, after the final frame plays, they should just be completely gone. Anyway, I'm quite happy with that. I want to show you about other sort of densities and other things like that. So 
uh, what we're going to do is going to go into frame one and we said we're going to have multiple boxes and we're going to make clones an evil clone uh, we'll have three clones which means that we're going to only going to get two extra ones because it includes the first one and we've got box two and box three so um i can't be bothered redrawing the animation so i'm just going to change them to different sizes now you will witness that boxes the density like i said before these big boxes are going to be uh, push more than the little boxes they're going to resist more they are more solid but they have the same amount of health at the moment um, i'd have to redraw and set a different health level to them so interesting i don't know why that glitch happens but things do just contact us info at impact gamers if you're struggling and we will work through the problems of uh why things are not working the way that they should uh but um yes i'm not certain sure why that's not destroying but there we go that's um uh that's mostly physics things i just want to show you about creation of objects so um finally just to add in just to throw in a final part and i know this isn't a complete game this is more just a a fun way to play you can add your own score or, or lives in this game and add different things you can also add different movements you can add a player eight direction movement but add it in as a a physics eight direction movement and then as long as it's within the group of physical objects it will be able to push and interact um, in your world so that group really saves a lot of time so let's just add in clicking so we'll add in multiple bouncing balls every time we click so new condition the mouse user clicks single click um, and then we're going to create an object which is the white shiny box create object just under the white shiny box we're going to create one of those we're going to create it off screen for the moment just going to shove it outside and then we're going to reposition it now click infusion knows that when i talk about position set x coordinate i'm talking about the one i've just created because in the lines of code i create something and then i say to move it it just knows i'm talking about that because it's the last thing i spoke about on that line um, so we want to so we want to find the position of the mouse that's what i want to do find the x position of the mouse i just clicked on the mouse current x position of the mouse oops syntax error that's just x mouse just one valid good okay and then right click on the same tick uh position set y coordinate yeah you got it the y position of the mouse so it's going to do that so now if i click start to add in more of those let's remove the barrier yeah absolute carnage um, the click is a one-off instance. It's also used if you're making a touchscreen game. Left click is the same thing, uh, but it's much more fun if you uh, if you if you want to uh, really break your game. Is there's an option for repeat while mouse key is pressed, which means when you hold down a button, uh, which then allows me to do this, and then really start messing up the world. If you notice, I've got 58 objects. Click Infusion can handle in the free version a thousand. So let's do that. Let's just. Let's just end with a world of spiky balls. Well, thank you for following these tutorials. As always, we will upload these to um, our website at impactgamers.net forward slash beginners. Um, and you can have a play. Contact us, info at impactgamers if you want. And there we go, I've maxed out my thousand. I have broken it. Hurrah. And I, <laughs> I'm not sure I can even close it. It's just not responding. What a way to end the video. Um, so just be careful, save your work, because uh, uh, I don't, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to save it. Hopefully it'll respond uh, or I'll have to make this from scratch. Anyway, take care. Uh, sub like, subscribe. If you want to support us, you can uh, financially at impactgamers.net um, or you could follow us on Patreon. Oh, there we go. The whole world's imploded. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.